Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome to a try a chapter video where I'm hoping to try the first chapter of several books that are on my priority TBR shelf with the hopes that they will pique my interest enough for me to want to pick them up during the next round of TBR tarot. I'm going to preface this video by saying um, I know this is not the best location to film but it is been a week. I have been sick. I have low energy and I just want to sit in my bed and film and feel cozy. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Um, but I also want to say I will probably not finish this entire video in one sitting. I am a slow physical reader. Physical reading is hard for me but i do want to give myself a chance to read the first chapters of all of these books and since i do have some time before my next tbr bingo it gives me ample amount of time to try the first chapters see which ones are like high up high up on my priority list and try to prioritize those for the upcoming tbr videos so that being said i'm going to talk about all of the books i plan on talking about in this video and then we're going to jump right in so without further ado let's start at the top stack i have two stacks uh, here I have sequels that are like direct sequels. I need to have read the rest of the books in the series in order to jump into the next one. And then I have another stack of standalones or ones that I feel like you can read without having read the other books or like I don't need to know a ton of information about the other books in the series. So let's talk about series first because this one's shorter. So we have Bloodless Ties by Katie Wismer, the third book. Yes, the third book in the um, Marionette series. I have read books one and two and really loved it. And this is book three. Yes, book three. The second book left off on a cliffhanger. So I'm definitely curious to see what I'm going to think about getting back into this one, especially because it's been a little while since I picked up book two, but I'm definitely intrigued about that one. Then we have Down to My Soul by Kennedy Ryan, the second book in the Soul series. This one follows Risan and Kai. We met them in the Grip trilogy, um, and I am intrigued to see what I'm going to think of book two. I didn't love book one, which is unfortunate, but I'm definitely curious to see what I'm going to think of book two and if I will enjoy their story more. Then we have Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh, the follow-up to Binding 13. I read Binding 13. I didn't love Binding 13. I don't know why everyone is like, gung-ho about the series but i do want to give the second book a try i did really enjoy the relationship in the first book i loved the relationship at the center and i really liked the tough topics that were handled in the story it just was too long for my liking that being said this book is also over 600 pages <laughs> so this one is also too long for my liking but i do want to try to give it a go and see if i end up liking this one more and then the last one is another Kennedy Ryan book, and that is Loving You Always. This is the second book in the Bennett series. And again, I did not like the first book in the series, but at this point, I am determined to finish Kennedy Ryan's backlist. So this is definitely one that I would like to read. And I wonder if I read the first chapter, will I be any more interested in their story? Or will I just have to struggle my way through it? Okay, let's talk about the series or standalones that I can read like on their own. Or if they're standalones, obviously they're just standalones. So we have Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert, the fifth book, I think, in the Dark Olympus series. This one is a Aphrodite and Hephaestus. Did I say that right? Um, Pandora and Adonis. Huh? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. It's one of the Dark Olympus books. It takes Greek uh, mythology and turns it into like modern day romance and i'm very curious to see what i'm gonna think of this one i have liked all the rest of the books in the series so i am willing to give it a go and i'm very excited to hopefully get caught up in the series because the next book is already out then we have daisy hates by jessa hastings this is daisy hates is it daisy hates i thought there was a a little title to go with this one but i guess not um the second book in the magnolia parks universe series and i loved the first book but i have been so nervous to get back into book two i do actually have an audiobook option to listen to this one so i think i'm going to give that one a go listen to the first chapter of this one although i did read the first um book you know without an audiobook so i feel like i really could if i wanted to do i want to cheat or do i want to read these all physically in hopes that i can get through them we'll see then we have the pool boy by nikki sloan this is the second book in the nashville neighborhood series uh, i read book one i didn't love it but i'm excited to get around to the second book in the series uh this one is an interconnected standalone so you don't have to read the first one so i'm definitely intrigued about that one then we have another katie wismer book and that is broken perfect lies this is her um standalone romantic suspense that i have yet to get to this one does not have an audiobook so that's primarily why i have not picked it up but i am curious to see what i'm going to think of her standalone <clears throat> And then we have the Hawthorne Brothers by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I said that weird, but you know what I meant. Um, this is the spinoff book to The Inheritance Games, and I really enjoy those first three. I don't know if you need to know all the details about the last ones in order to read this one, but since it is a spinoff, I'm treating it as such, and I am intrigued to get around to this one because I think that book two is coming out soon. And then the second to last book on the stack, we have Got the Kana by Rue Nix. I have read a Rue Nix book and last month was it last month yes the predator and i loved it so i'm excited to get around to this one this is a tale of dark romance i think it's dark academia i don't really know too much more than that but i am curious to give it a go it's absolutely stunning it has beautiful like purple spray spray edges so i am intrigued i've 
loved her writing in the past so definitely curious please don't fall and then the last book on this list is locked up liars by l thorpe uh this is a why choose romance that's all i know about it really i think it has to take it takes place in a prison maybe um but i've heard really good things everyone's been hyping it up so i've been wanting to give it a go and i did get this one gifted to me Let's see by corinne so thank you so much corinne i'm excited to get to this one and hopefully these chapters aren't long i don't know i'm scared so i think i'm gonna go through and see like which one has the longest chapters and put this one off to the side because my husband does want to watch tv tonight but um i will try to go for the shorter chapters for today and then pick this back up tomorrow and read a few more and see which ones end up at the top of my list so without further ado let's get into it i will let you guys know what i read first Okay, friends, I have my stack of books here that had pretty relatively short chapters. I think Gotha Kana's chapter was one page, and I'm counting the prologue as chapter one, because if I need more, I'll read more. If I feel like I don't really understand anything in that one page, <laughs> then I'll give it another chapter, but these ones have the shortest, shortest chapters between, ranging between one page and, or two pages, and six pages. So we're going to go ahead and jump into these, and I will give you updates as I continue and as I finish each one. That way I don't lose all the, you know, the information, because you know, Nat equals brain size. So let's get into it. Okay, so I just read the first two chapters of Gothicana because that first page definitely left me intrigued. I was like, ooh, what the hell am I gonna read? And then I read the second chapter and I was like, mm, okay, I still don't understand, but I love it. I love the writing. It's very like, not whimsical, but like, oh, sorry, <laughs> I have this lingering cough, um, but it's like creepy with an edge of like really intricate writing. Like I'm just intrigued. So basically we start off with, I'm going to butcher this name and I just read it. Okay. Um, what's his name? Vad, Vad, Vad. That's interesting. Um, and he, it's like when he is very small and he's in this like orphanage i think with other boys and he's talking to old zelda who is known in this town for being very creepy and knowing things that she sh shouldn't even though she's blind and can't see anything but she sees things before everybody else sees them and she tells him one day he's going to go to a castle where no one else goes and when he gets there he's going to meet somebody with violet eyes and to pay attention to that because it's really important and it will be the matter of like death life and death and that's the end of his chapter and then you meet I just read it, but it's not like a normal name. <laughs> Corvina, Corvina, Corvina. Um, and it's talking about her growing up with her mother who was deemed crazy because she didn't talk and everybody thought that she was a witch, but cause, because she heard voices, she always heard voices, but she is not really a talker. The only time she ever talked was when she was telling her daughter something of importance or talking to the voices around her. And she was just talking about how much she loved her mother and the, um, like appreciation and love that she had for her but also like the interesting things that were going to come from the teachings that her mother gave her um so i'm really interested interested by this one this is definitely one that i could see myself really enjoying um not a lot has happened and you get a little line at the very end of um corvina's chapter about how she also hears voices and i just think it's going to be a very interesting very dark gothic read there was definitely a long page of trick warnings on here so makes me even more intrigued um but i'm definitely curious this is definitely one that i want to read like asap now because it just seems like it's going to be a fun book okay i think i'm going to move on to down to my soul by kennedy ryan this one has a really short prologue and then a first chapter that's also really short so i think i might try to read both of them just to get a bit of an understanding about where this story is going to go from book two so i will keep you updated i'm hoping that i like this one and where the story is going to go because i want to love it i really do trying to keep this somewhat interesting by changing up the angle every single time hopefully it's working for you down to my soul by kennedy ryan hm. i actually am very intrigued by the way that this first chapter and prologue started off because it's definitely already throwing drama into the mix and i am, if i'm anything i do love a good drama i love drama i love the tea i love all the things that make you think mm, what the hell what the hell and this is 
it's doing it it's doing it it's doing its job and i am intrigued i'm hoping that this will make me love their story so surprisingly enough i'm like excited to pick this up even though i didn't love book one it's not that i didn't like hate it i didn't hate it at all i gave it three stars it wasn't like it was a terrible book but there was just some things i didn't love about it but i'm hoping that kennedy ryan will give these characters a chance to rectify themselves and for me to fall in love with them because i'm already intrigued so so far so good two books that i'm already like literally so pumped for so i'm hoping hoping that the trend continues but i'm also hoping that some of these don't do that because then i'll have a list of priority books too long so we'll see okay ignore the mess i'm moving on to broken perfect lies by katie Wismer. this is definitely one that i'm so excited for i've heard nothing but good things and good reviews about this book and i have followed K katie's um progress on her writing for a really long time so i kind of like i not not just me so many people watched her write this book and watched it come to fruition so i'm really curious to see what i'm going to think of it it's not a long chapter it's only six pages and the writing is pretty big so i'm hoping it doesn't take me too long i think the those couple pages took me a long time but also my foot was falling asleep and i was struggling my brain wasn't connecting to the words because my foot was tingling so i'm gonna blame that and hopefully i can read this one a little bit faster <laughs> Okay, so I just read the first two chapters of Broken Perfect Lies by Katie Wismer. The first one was from the guy's perspective, and the second one was from the girl's perspective. So I'm definitely, oh my god, this cough. <laughs> I'm definitely, <laughs> my snake is stop. <laughs> I'm definitely intrigued to keep going. I think intrigued is my word of the day for some reason. I am excited to continue. I like Katie's writing. It's very easy to read. It's very easy to like fly through. Like I just kept wanting to turn the pages. So that's always a good thing, especially in my book especially for a physical book. The first perspective follows Heath and his sister has just been in a car accident and it looks like she's possibly in a coma. They don't give you too much answers but he's struggling to pay the medical bills. His mother is obviously grieving her daughter and um, he is just very angry about the whole thing. The fiance of his sister was the one driving the car and he doesn't seem very willing to stick around even though obviously it seems as though he was at fault and so Heath is really struggling with that. He ends up going to an interview for security and run into somebody that he knew from his past and he doesn't get the job so that's his chapter and then the next chapter follows parker who is the female main character and i know from the synopsis that she is like a hannah montana um inspired um singer she has a very secret identity but she is a pop star um and she is dodging her current bodyguard and um she goes to coffee and you find out that she was either in love with somebody or had a sibling that recently passed away and she's grieving the loss of that person and she runs into this hard brick wall drops her coffee and I think it's gonna be Heath I don't really know it doesn't specify it's just those just the first two chapters but I think what this is setting up is a bodyguard um pop star romance hate to love so I'm definitely curious to see what I'm going to think of this one I love Katie's writing I think it's going to be a fun read for sure and I already can see a lot of improvement just in the first two chapters of her work and i already thought her work was great so i'm definitely excited for this one okay i think i'm gonna keep the katie wismer train going and just pick up um broken lies broken ties bloodless wow i can't read backwards bloodless ties <laughs> the third book in the series so we will see what i think of this one i'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in and then the last one i think i'm gonna do for the day is the hawthorne brothers and then i will do those longer chapters tomorrow Okay, so I just read the prologue in the first chapter of Bloodless Ties, and this is the first one where I think that I'm not as excited to pick it up, not because I wasn't intrigued, because I really was, but I feel like for me, I, I'm gonna have to go back and read the second book to get a little bit more details about the people that are being mentioned, because I am just a little bit lost. It's been a while since I picked up book two, and I think it's been too long for me, unfortunately, which means that I need to go back, read book two, reread book two and then get to book three. I'm just not grasping all the information that I know she's trying to give me. So this is definitely what I'm gonna have to put on the back burner and pick up once I've reread book two. So this is gonna go at the bottom of my list for the time being. And finally, we're gonna move on to the last book for today and I'll pick up the rest of tomorrow. And that is The Hawthorne Brothers by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, the spinoff book to The Inheritance Games. I'm not going to give you a ton of information about this one just because it is 
a sequel and I don't want to spoil anything but I am intrigued to see if I'm going to like the perspectives and that we're going to follow in this book and if it's going to pull me in as much as that trilogy did so we shall see. And just like that, the last book that I'm going to be reading today, well not book, last chapter I'm going to be reading today is done. I did read the first, again, this <laughs> damn cough is killing me. I did read the first two chapters of this book. Again, I, you know what? I want to say I'm proud of myself because I really thought just one chapter was going to take me literally a thousand years. But I read almost the two chapters of every single book that we have here. So go me. Woohoo. Um, I... <laughs> I think this one is going to be a really fun book. I loved the Hawthorne Brothers when I was reading the original trilogy, but this one is definitely making me feel like I could really love this book. However, that being said, it's not at the highest on my priority list right now. I think that I am much more inclined to pick up some of the other books that are on my list, but I do step definitely still want to read this. It is a series that I would like to stay caught up with because I feel like once I start you know, forgetting the details, it's going to be harder to go back. Um, so I would like to read this one so I can read the second book coming out very, very soon, but I think it's just a little bit lower on my list than some of the rest of these books. So I'm going to take the five that I've read so far today, put them in order of like highest priority to lowest priority, and then tomorrow I will read one, two, three, four, five, six more chapters and let you guys know what I think. Okay, so I think this is my current ranking. I got the Kana at the top because I thought this was the most intriguing of all the books that I picked up. It was different, it was dark, it was mysterious, and I'm very, very intrigued. Then we have Broken Perfect Lies because I think this one could be a really fun, easy read, especially one to challenge me to actually pick up my Kindle and read something that doesn't require an audiobook. Then surprisingly, we have Down to My Soul by Kennedy Ryan, uh, the second book in the, in the Soul series, one that I didn't think I was going to be at all excited for since I didn't love the first book, but definitely very intrigued to see where their story is going to go. And then we have Bloodless Ties, the third book in the Marionette series, only this far down just because I want to reread the second book, but I think that I will try to prior prioritize reading this rereading the second book very soon so I can finally get to book three. And then at the very bottom we have the Hawthorne, uh, the Brothers Hawthorne, um, and I really think that I will love this one. I just I think I want some more time before I prioritize myself to pick it up. So here are the five books in the current priority order. And tomorrow we will get the rest of the options and see if any of them be out Got the Kana. <sighs> Besties, we're back at it again. It's time to continue this try a chapter experience. And I have two elephants to address before we get into this. First of all, if you see any trash at any time in this video, no, you didn't. Okay, no, you didn't. I'm trying to keep the filming, you know, angles fun, fresh, spicy for you. Uh, but not every angle is clean. So please, if you see it, just shield your eyes, okay? Secondly, I would like to address the fact that I have worn this shirt in so many videos recently. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just like, you know, me and my piles of laundry that I refuse to fold. I just pull things off the top and this just happens to be on the top every time. Or if I'm just intrinsically drawn to the shirt, I don't know what it is. But it's the power of a washing machine. And I'm so sorry for the lack of clothing choices. <laughs> in recent months but apparently i like the shirt so we're gonna just roll with it but we have the original ranking from yesterday and then we have the if i count it correctly six books yeah six books that i'm going to read today not books but chapters i'm gonna read today to see where they fit in the line of books that i want to prioritize first so i don't know what i'm gonna start with i might just stop start at the one that's at the top and just work my way through I don't have any particular like fears about any of these really. I just know that they're long and I'm a slow reader. So yeah, I'm going to push myself though because yesterday I actually did better than I thought that I was going to. So I feel like that is going to give me the extra push and the de desire to actually want to read these books with my eyeballs. So without further ado, let's start with the first one, Loving You Always by Kennedy Ryan, the second book in the Bennett series.
Okay, friends, I just finished the first chapter of Loving You Always by Kennedy Ryan, and it pains me to say that I think that I need to put this one at the bottom of my priority list for the time being. In this current season of my reading, I just want to read things that are giving me joy and are exciting me and as of right now like I'm on the verge of a slump and this is not what I want to pick up. These first the first chapter in and of itself was just bringing up more of the same drama that we dealt with in the first book that I already didn't enjoy. This is a love triangle romance and I just don't like those and I feel like this is the epitome of the reason why I don't like love, tri love triangle books and I wish that I was more excited and I wish that I was so pumped to pick up this next book in the series but this first chapter definitely didn't give me those feels. That being said like I want to read the rest of Kennedy Ryan's backlist and I will finish out this series at some point I just don't think it's time to prioritize it at this point so that being said with as much pain in my heart as it, is, as it is I'm going to put this one at the bottom of my stack for now okay next right at the top of the stack is Cruel Seduction by Katie Roberts I'm going to read the first I believe it was like eight pages of this one and see what I think Okay, even though these chapters are a little bit longer, that one actually seemed like it went by relatively quickly, but I did read the first eight pages of Cruel Seduction, and this one makes me so intrigued because I honestly forgot how the last book in the series ended, and this just like kicks it off with a bang. There's already so much drama, there's already so many things left unanswered that I feel so curious about. This is an Aphrodite and Hephaestus retelling, and I'm just... It's going to give. I know it's going to give because it's already starting off as an enemies to lovers with a very, very, very strong badass female character that knows how to play the politics of this game. And I am just so intrigued by this story. So this is definitely going to go high up on the list. I don't exactly know where, but it's going to go up pretty high because I just, I'm loving. It was giving and I, I don't really know how else to say it other than the fact that I was reading it with my eyeballs and I wanted to continue to turn the pages. So that is when you know that it's good. Okay, next on the stack is going to be... Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings, the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe. This one is one that I am equally as excited about as I am absolutely terrified of. So I'm really hoping this one jumps to the top of my list and I really want to pick it up. Um, this one is a little bit different because the first book in the series I read physically, whereas I know for the second book I'll be reading with the audiobook. Not today, but when I do decide to pick it up. So I know it'll get, I'll get through it much faster than I did book one. But I have not decided if I want to reread book one before getting to book two, but I feel like reading the first chapter of this will solidify my decision between the two options. Okay, well... <laughs> Here, let me just lay the land for you. Um, it took me seven minutes to read five pages. I gave up. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to be the case for today's video. It's not like I'm like DNFing it or never reading it again. But first of all, this book has footnotes. And I have a hate for footnotes. I just don't think that they are at all necessary in a story. Especially when like this where it's a romance. Like, girl, you don't need no damn footnotes. So that was confusing me. And I, I kept trying to look around for the numbers. But the numbers are so small that I kept missing them. And then I would go down and think, oh, damn, I missed it when I would get to... 15 and I didn't even read 13 or 14 so like I just don't like footnotes so for me the audiobook is the way to go with this story because absolutely ain't no way ain't no way I'm reading this one physically the first book in the series I don't think it had footnotes I could be wrong but I'm almost positive that it did not have footnotes but again I could be wrong but I just I couldn't do it so it technically if we were ranking things based off of like my excitement about the book it would go a little bit higher but because I literally couldn't finish the first chapter it's going right at the bottom Okay, we have three left, and I don't know which ones I want to go with. I'm afraid to try to read this because, from what I can remember, she has a very, very, like, stream of, consciousness, stream of consciousness, is that what I'm looking for? Writing, and it was tough to listen to the audiobook of this, so I'm afraid. But I think maybe I'll just get this out of the way, I and mean, these ones should be relatively easy, so... Let's move on to Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh and read the first... It's gonna be long, isn't it? What did I do to deserve this? The first 11 pages. <laughs> Pray for me.
that was brutal that was so freaking brutal but i did read the first chapter of keeping 13 by chloe walsh and it's it's hard for me to rank this one because that was one of the hardest chapters i have ever read um i don't know what to say without spoiling the book uh obviously but the this is the second book in a series and the first book heavily deals with child abuse um and bullying and a lot of other things check the trigger warnings before going into the series but oh that it was just it was very intense and it was very gruesome and it was very much on the page and it was very 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 hard to read at the very end of the last book a character is left with an ultimatum and um you're seeing that ultimatum come to fruition in the first chapter of this book and it literally picks up right where it left off like the same words from the last book are the start of this series of this book and oh man i don't know <laughs> i think that that probably could have been easier to get through with an audiobook i had to keep like stopping myself from reading because i was just so viscerally reacting to what was on the page and it was very very uncomfortable um unsettling so I don't I don't know um would I like to pick this up yes I would but I, as long as it's not like that for the rest of the book I think I'll be just fine um but I don't know I don't know I don't know where to rank this I have to think about it for just a little bit and I will come back with the last two books but let me think about where I'm gonna rank this and I will get back to you shortly all right the stack is getting too big to hold soon but I think I settled on like right in the middle um there are some things holding me back from wanting to pick it up but there's also some things that make me really want to pick it up and give it a go so that's where I'm gonna land with keeping 13 and I'm gonna wait a little bit before I pick that one up to um not want to cry because that la like literally the end of the last chapter I the emotions were trying to take over me, so <sighs> I was not expecting that, but now let's go into something lighter, hopefully. <laughs> okay, I have two books left. Both of them are smutty adult romances. I don't know which one I want to go with. I know that this is more like of a taboo romance. It's age gap, reverse age gap. The female in the story is older than the pool boy, and this is a why choose. I believe it takes place in a prison. And I've just heard really good things about them. So I don't know which one I want to go with. I think I want to go with this one. I feel like it's going to be a little bit lighter than uh, the prison one. And I think I'll end off with this because I just need something different to lighten my mood because holy crap. <laughs> Well, I just read the first chapter of The Pool Boy. <sighs> um, <laughs> that's what, what I was expecting. I was reading the back to see if it's a spoiler, but it does say it <laughs> on the back of the book. So this one follows Erica and she just turned 42. It's her birthday. She's out for dinner with her husband. She made special arrangements, but his hus her husband works a ton and he gets called away into the office. And when she gets home, she's like, damn, for the last year I've been working out. I've been working on my body, eating healthy. I feel good in my body. And I bought this lingerie for myself on my birthday. And I'm going to go surprise my husband at work. You know, like most doting wives might do when they want a little action. You all know where this is going, right? Um, except for I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I did, but I didn't. Uh, she gets to his work, goes up the elevator, opens his door, only to find him begging his boss, his male boss. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. But what a twist what a twist um so now she's in the midst of a midlife crisis and i'm assuming she's going to meet a poor boy in that time i haven't gotten there yet but the first chapter was easy to read i liked the twist i'm definitely intrigued to see where this is going to go i can already tell the spice is going to be top notch and i already like the like premise of the story better than the first book in the series so this is making me really excited to want to pick up book two and i've been putting this off because i didn't love the doctor so I'm excited. I'm excited. That was exactly what I was looking for from this story. And it definitely lightened my mood after the last book. So that is exactly what I was looking for. All right. This video idea is 
about to come to an end as I'm going to read the last and final book that's on my list for today and that is Locked Up Liars by L. Thorpe. Okay, the final chapter has been accomplished and I can definitely say that I am intrigued by his story. However, the first chapter did not give me a lot, but what did give me a lot was the synopsis on the back. So after reading the synopsis on the back and reading the first chapter, I am so intrigued by this story. First of all, I love a good white shoes. Everyone knows this. I am a white shoes lover to my core. So finding out the dynamics of this white shoes is insane i knew it took place at a prison but i didn't know the circumstances behind it but it's like an inmate i think she's a guard another guard i don't really know what she is it just says that she takes a job she's forced to take a job at st new prison it doesn't say what she's there for so we have a, a guard an inmate her and then the lawyer excuse me and it's a white cheese between the, the four of them i'm obsessed i'm obsessed i'm obsessed i need to read it now <laughs> <laughs> this might take the cake for the top of the priority list because just something about a white shoe story it gets me every time it gets me every time and it's like even if it's not good like i'll eat that shit up i'll eat that shit up so this is definitely one that i am so excited for okay so here are the final rankings for the books that i am the most excited to read surprisingly enough my white shoes ended up at the top i mean i'm not surprised but i thought there, there was a few more books that might have ended up at number one and i wasn't expecting it to be this one but i'm also not mad that it's this one however what i am surprised about is that my last one is daisy hates that one really it just throws me for a loop because i thought that i was going to be so excited for it so i would say like the first five or six are going to be the ones that i really try to prioritize in the next month trying to fit into any prompts for my tbr tarot um so we have Locked Up Liars with number one, number two being Gothicana, then we have number three, The Pool Boy, number four is Cruel Seduction, number five is Broken Perfect Lies, and then number six is Down to My Soul by Kennedy Ryan. So I feel like that is very fitting, and then these ones, if I can get to them anytime soon, that would be great, but they're not the highest priority for me at this time, although I'm still very excited for them because they are on my priority TBR. It's not like I'm not excited for any of these, it's just these are ranked lower than the rest. Alrighty friends, that is the end of this video. Let me know if you want to see any other video concepts come out of this try a chapter video. If you want to see a vlog of my top six or my top five or my top three, or if you just want to see my thoughts about them at the very end, maybe I can come back and do like an updated wrap up with the books that I read and where I would rank them after um, having read them and if they still stayed in the same numbers in regards to how much I liked them. So feel free to let me know any ideas that you have for follow-up videos for this and if you would be interested in seeing that. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to sit with me and hang out in this video. If you made it to the end and you don't know anything else to comment, leave a book stack emoji for the book stack that I have made today. I really appreciate you taking the time. I love you so much. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't don't forget to subscribe before you leave and of course leave any comments questions suggestions in the comment section below and i will see you in the next video bye